description, it's now time for member statement. But we also want to recognize Peter Sherman, member for Thornhill for the 39th and 40th Parliament. That's in the Speaker's Gallery. And now we have the member from Newmarket, Aurora. Madam Speaker, this past Sunday evening, I attended the Hala for Israel, a prayer event hosted by Jewish women from the Kahab Newmarket. I was honoured to pray alongside women in my community for all the innocent lives that were lost and for those in captivity in Israel. The tragic loss of life and the terror invoked among the men, women, families and children in Israel is beyond words. I want you all to know that I condemn the Hamas's heinous acts on the people of Israel. Racism, hate and discrimination have no place in Ontario and the safety of all communities has and always remains of the utmost importance. During this event, I had the privilege of meeting the Hala Do, reading a memorial prayer, listening to prayers in English and in Hebrew. When we were praying, the Hala Do rose, and then we braided the Do. Today, I believe the braided Hala has become a beacon of support, hope, and prayer for the people of Israel, and reflects the heartfelt sorrow we feel for those who have lost their loved ones. I pray for a peaceable outcome for all people, for all those innocent souls lost. I pray that their souls, through the mercy of God, may rest in peace. Member Statement, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. This week is Community Health and Wellbeing Week in Ontario. It is a week to celebrate the members of Alliance for Healthier Community. Those are Community Health Centre, Indigenous Prime Week, healthcare organization, community family health teams, and nurse practitioner-led clinics, and all the good work that they do caring for us and keeping us healthy. There are 111 members of the Alliance who serve Ontario in every corners of this province. These are not-for-profit agency that provide comprehensive primary care to the people who often face barriers to access and health inequities. From health promotion, disease prevention, primary care, chronic disease management, from newborn and children to programs for elderly person center, they do it all, Speaker. They keep people healthy and out of emergency room, which is good for their clients, decrease demands on the acute care system, save money. It's a win-win. I can assure you that the NDP colleagues and I will always stand for equitable access to health care services for everyone living in Ontario. That includes the 2.2 million Ontarians who do not have access to primary care. The Ontario Medical Association was here two days ago asking the government to fund interdisciplinary primary care teams. We can do this, Speaker. Ontario government needs to fund more nurse practitioner-led clinic, community family health teams, indigenous primary health care organizations, and community health center right now. Thank you. The member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's my pleasure to uh, rise in the House today to say that our government is delivering on its promise to expand services along the Kitchener Go Rail Line. There aren't always big announcements or ribbon cuttings for this type of work. These are the sorts of projects that you have to be a bit of a transit nerd uh, to really appreciate. So I won't go over the whole history, like when the NDP scrapped Go Train from Guelph in 1993, but let's take a little bit of a look back, Mr. Speaker. Under the previous Liberal government, the Kitchener Line schedule from 2017 listed, tra uh, listed train trips at eight trips per day. And I'm proud to say, since we have took office, we have doubled those trips along the Kitchener Line. Since 2018, Metrolinx has completed track upgrades on the Kitchener Line so people can get to where they need to go 15 minutes faster. In 2021, engineering crews worked on track through the city of Guelph. Poor track conditions and multiple crossings had reduced train speeds to just, get this colleagues, 16 kilometers per hour. Now trains travel the same stretch at over 40 kilometers per hour. The total travel time between Kitchener and Toronto, thanks to these types of improvements, will soon reach just 90 minutes. This would make the line even more of an attractive option instead of taking the 401. 
This is, work is critical to getting trains going faster and to getting more trains on the track. And we've gotten a lot of work done, but we will not stop there, Mr. Speaker. We will keep going. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Windsor West. Thank you. Speaker, Ontario has an opioid and overdose epidemic. The number of overdoses in my community and across the province are extremely high and very alarming. Receiving funding from the government to operate the Safe Point Consumption and Treatment Services site in Windsor and many others across the province is not only vital, it's life-saving. Even though all government requirements have been met months ago, Speaker, provincial funding has not been made available and timelines for approval have not been provided. Funding for the site has solely been provided through the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit, which is unacceptable. Further government funding delays will impact my community in Windsor. Lives are in the balance. I wrote the Minister of Health on two separate occasions, as did the health unit, asking for an urgent reply. There has been no response. The health unit's recent letter stated, since opening its doors on April 26, 2023, as a temporary urgent public health needs site, SafePoint has had hundreds of visits from people in need of care. Dozens of referrals to addiction treatment, mental health supports, and social services have occurred in addition to primary care, wound care, and foot care on site. The site has experienced no safety concerns or issues requiring emergency response and has developed strong relationships with patients, area residents, law enforcement, and the business community in the surrounding area. In addition, the CTS site received municipal municipal support in the spring of 2022 to proceed with the application that was later validated under the new Municipal Council. This government needs to do the right thing now, support municipalities trying to address the opioid crisis, and provide funding for safe places for people to seek help and get support, places like Safe Point. Thank you very much. Member statements? The member for Markham Thornhill. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there were two special events that took place in my riding of Mark and Thornhill. Both these organizations and their initiatives are close to my heart. On October 6th, I attended the ground opening of Kipted People Services in Markham, which provide vital support for children with special need. A special thank you to founder of Diana Yang, who started the services in Scarborough and expanded into Markham. On the same day, I also had the honor of being part of the Cherish Integrated Services Love Gala. I have known this organization for about 15 years, as they have been dedicated to helping children with intellectual needs and challenges. My heartfelt gratitude go out to Ivy Lamb, Hugo Lamb, Kilo Long, and everyone involved in this service who wholeheartedly serve the families in their community. Mr. Speaker, even though they are independent organization, they collaborate to make sure people can access all the programs they need with maximum benefits. The gifted people services and cherish integrated services can empower families in our community with the knowledge and passion, advocacy skill, helping them to enjoy life to the fullest through their program. I believe many other organizations can learn from this example to better serve our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Waterloo. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, today is a person's day in Canada. It marks the day in 1929 when the historic decision was made to include women in the legal definition of persons. This gave women the right to be appointed to the Senate of Canada and paved the way for women's increased participation in public and political life. To honour the day, I've welcomed a young female leader from my community of Waterloo, Olivia Batt, to introduce her to this world of Queen's Park. Uh, Olivia has shown tremendous leadership in our community, and I have no doubt that one day we will benefit from having her voice here at Queen's Park. I currently serve as the Ontario representative for the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, and it is a privilege to serve, mentor, and lead on the issue of democratic equality. Historically, women have fought tirelessly for their rights, breaking barriers and shattering glass ceilings. I'd also like to thank my colleague, uh, the member from Nickel Belt, for encouraging the former speaker to create space here at Queen's Park to acknowledge female leadership. 
If you take a stroll down to the first floor of this very building, you'll see faces of some of the most powerful women at Queen's Park, and Ontario is stronger for their leadership. Women in politics are not just a symbol of progress, but a catalyst for change. By including women in political discourse, we ensure a more inclusive and representative democracy. Let us celebrate their achievements, amplify their voices, and work towards a future where gender equality is not just a dream, but a reality. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I have been extremely fortunate to have lived among, supported, represented, and advocated for the Jewish community throughout my life and my time in office. My best friend growing up was the uh, daughter of Canada's former Solicitor General Robert Kaplan, who was Jewish, and that was my introduction to the community. I know members of the community to be fundamentally decent people who value life and family and have no desire to harm anyone. Representatives of the community are often the first to stand up, stand shoulder to shoulder with other community or faith groups when that group has been targeted, such as joining hands around a mosque, for example, which I saw them do. Unfortunately, some faith leaders have not been so quick to reciprocate at this difficult time for Israel, but I hold out hope that they will. Speaker, words like strong and united cannot express the extent of the resiliency of the Jewish community in my riding and abroad in recent weeks. Within my riding, organizations are hosting vigils, community fundraising dinners, and workshops on how to cope during these difficult times. And we will stand by them, this government, myself, and my colleagues. Some may recall my previous member statement on Wednesday before the terrorist attack on Israel. I condemned the acts of vandalism against the Jewish community, which had occurred already in my riding during the High Holy Days. With the outbreak of the war, further displays of hate and intolerance, we cannot be complacent. We must remind ourselves that mutual respect and tolerance are no small part of what makes Ontario exceptional. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Kanata, Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm incredibly honoured to be making my first member statement representing the constituency of Kanata Carleton. I want to thank the constituents for putting their trust and faith in me, which I take as a solemn responsibility. Mr. Speaker, I've heard from many how our health care system is failing, how the cost of living is beyond their means, how something as simple as school transportation is being mismanaged and underfunded. We must do better. There are people working hard to help people in our community. The Canada Food Cupboard, the West Carlton Food Access Centre, the Western Ottawa Community Resource Centre all bring invaluable services to those in need. Their selfless work is a constant inspiration that I hope to emulate here at Queen's Park. There is so much to be thankful for. Fall colours, craft fairs, the solemn days of gratitude and remembrance in November, joyful Santa Claus parades in Canada on November the 25th, Constance Bay on December the 2nd, and Carp Village on December the 9th. I look forward to seeing everyone there and at many other community events in the coming weeks. I would also like to point out, Mr. Speaker, that Canada is home to the Ottawa Senators. And mindful of where I'm presently standing, may I just say, Go, Sens, go. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Burlington. Good morning, Speaker. I'm thrilled to share with you an, an enchanting event that's returning to Burlington this October. The Great Pumpkin Trail, hosted by the Royal Botanical Gardens, is back for its 10th anniversary. The Great Pumpkin Trail runs for the last two weekends in October and boasts elaborate pumpkin carvings along one kilometer of trail through Hendry Park. This year, the Great Pumpkin Trail has a brand new pathway leading to a mini midway exhibition at Cherry Hill Gate, featuring thrilling rides and inflatables for both the young and the young at heart. Here, here. This walk through the trail goes through Hendry Valley, illuminated by the soft candlelit glow of hundreds of jack-o'-lanterns. The Great Pumpkin Trail offers an evening of delight and wonder for everyone with live entertainment, 
pumpkin-themed activities, and delicious fall-inspired treats. Dressing up is encouraged to embrace the spirit of Halloween while exploring, exploring the trails at the Botanical Gardens. The Great Pumpkin Trail embraces the magic of RBG's Hendry Park in Burlington, and it's an event that promises fun for the whole family and supports the crucial work of the Royal Botanical Gardens in my community. Thank you. Here, here. <clears throat> The member for Stormont, Dundas Glengarry. Uh, it's a privilege to rise and recognize a great initiative and a passionate team of volunteers helping their community during the Halloween season. As we all know, Halloween is a time for trick-or-treaters, jack-o'-lanterns, scary costumes, and haunted houses. To prepare for Halloween, my wife and I had a pleasure of attending the Ghost Walk for Charity held in Cornwall, Speaker. If you like to be scared and see spooky things, you do not want to miss this event. The suspense-filled charity walk definitely got my wife and I ready for Halloween. Now my kids want to be spooked. The Ghost Walk for Charity is an initiative led by Michael Turcott, who is a dedicated community member with a long history of supporting and volunteering his time to many local charities and organizations. For years, people would flock to Michael's home in Cornwall to walk through his haunted garage, and from that was born the initiative. This year's sixth annual Ghost Walk for Charity is being held every Thursday through sun Saturday evening and a non-scary option every Saturday and Sunday at the Cornwall Square. Over the last five years, I'm proud to share that this event has donated well over $100,000 to worthy organizations. This year's proceeds will go to benefit the Children's Treatment Centre, the Cornwall Hospice, Ronald McDonald House Ottawa, Cornwall Canada Day, Comfort Quilts and Centre 105. I'd like to encourage all to attend this spooky event that has provided so much support over the years to great charities and organizations. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House.